What's going on guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell and today we're gonna to go over some deadlift cues. Now, I'm huge on bracing and positioning. I think it's a thing that is really missing from Western lifting culture. We have a culture that is so based around the movers. Uh, we have a lot of influence from bodybuilding culture dating all the way back to the leader principles and we tend to look at it as how do we develop a muscle or even a movement pattern through a specific range to develop more strength and power in that position. But what we end up uh, missing out on is the very position and bracing and stability that you need to be successful in the first place. You can't put the cart before the horse and it doesn't matter how physically strong you are or how fast you can move if you're not in a good position. Now when I look at other systems, let's say international systems or types of training with performance sports that are more rooted in Olympic lifting or let's say more formal powerlifting systems, there is a lot more time and attention that is given towards proper setup and uh, efficient technique that leads all of the developmental work you do down the road. We tend to start with the developmental work and we worry about positioning afterwards, which is just completely backwards. I put the breathing and bracing ebook in the description again. Every deadlift video I do from probably here to eternity, I'm gonna put it in because it's so important and so underutilized. Remember, stability, coordination, that leads strength and power every single time. And I know not a single one of you incorporated as much as you need to. So before we do anything to get in a deadlift position, the hips have to be neutral. So for most of you, that's tucking the hips under. If you have an interior pelvic tilt, it's getting the glutes tight, hips are tucked under, ribs are down, cannonball breathing. You're not doing anything, even if you have a belt on, you're not just taking a breath and pushing out, ribs are down, you're bringing the abs in, you're tensing, you're ready to take a cannonball to the gut, okay? That's what is going to make your spine rigid under a load, which is gonna keep you safe, but it's also gonna make sure that when your legs fire into the ground and move that bar, that you're gonna move the bar up and you're not gonna give it the spine, okay? So it's safer, but it's also just infinitely more efficient. So we've covered that. So let's assume that you're pretty good with your midsection, your upper back is strong. You can handle position for your working sets. And now you're working on being more mechanical and deliberate with how you move the bar. Well, I'm gonna go over a specific cue and everybody pulls a little different. Everybody has different leverages, but this specific cue was huge for me when it came to being a more deliberate deadlifter. My deadlift was always very finicky. It never felt the same day to day. I had days where I felt explosive and powerful and I could pull the bar any which way. I had days where 80% wouldn't budge off the ground because I just didn't have confidence with it. To give you a little bit of a backstory, I'm going to World. It's the official Strongman Games. It's basically World's Strongest Man, but for the different weight classes, for the Masters, for the women's divisions. It's gonna be in Daytona Beach, November 1st in uh, Florida, in the United States. We have a big international turnout. It's gonna be a fantastic show. Well, there's a deadlift ladder and it's heavy. It's actually not as heavy as it was last year, but it's still damn heavy. Four deadlift bars, it starts at 585, goes to 635, 675, then 725. That's my weight class at 231 and under. Last year, I think it ended at 765, and there were a couple guys that cleared out the whole series. So at the time where I signed up for it, my best pull from the ground was a 665. And given all of the issues I had, given how hesitant I was to pull heavy because I was still working out the kinks with back issues, with bracing, with being confident, deliberate with big weights, I knew I was really overreaching to try and, and meet that. So I sat down, I put together a progression, it addressed everything I needed to work on for my weaknesses, and I didn't get panicky and just start pulling heavy weights. I stuck to the progression, but I knew for that last heavy workout, I knew what weight I needed to move to have a viable shot at clearing out that series. Well, I just had that workout a couple days ago and it went fantastic. It was so validating for the things I've been preaching to you guys that I've been patient with for myself. The bracing was a huge aspect, but I'm gonna go over the cue that I use to consistently break the weight from the ground and to be able to tough out and grind out heavier pulls. So this is my pull I just did. It was a 700 pound for a double. Now, like I said, 665 was my previous best on the floor. I did 675 a couple weeks after I signed up for my prep that moved okay. But to date, I was not a 700 pound deadlifter. So I knew if I was gonna get that 725, 700, 700 had to be there for a couple. But it wasn't enough to move it. I had to be able to move it confidently without any deviation in form knowing that I was stable and consistent. That's the only way you're gonna be successful as a deadlifter. 
Do not look at these guys who are freaks who can just get really angry, get to the bar and rip it up off the ground. Because even if that's how you do it, it takes a long time to build up to that intensity and to be consistent with it. Okay, you wanna be deliberate, you wanna be mechanical. So this is the cue, this is how I break the bar off the ground. Now, as far as leverages go, you get to a deadlift, you get to the bar, you're bracing, okay, hips are neutral, ribs down, you're tight, you got that cannonball breathing. So then the next question is, okay, exactly how do I pull to get the bar moving and to get it moving fast? Well, we know leverage is, the further the weight, out, the further the weight is out in front of you, the harder it's gonna be. So we always focus on putting the weight as close to your center of mass as possible because that's gonna put it closer to the joints that are moving. So with the deadlift, the big one we're worried about is the hips. The closer the hips are to the bar, the stronger you're gonna be. So if I'm sumo, look how close the bar stays to my hips as I come down. Whereas if I bring my feet in, my butt moves back, my hips move further away. So not only is that a harder action for my hips to move, but it's harder for me to brace, okay? It puts my, my uh, spine, the muscles that brace my spine at a disadvantage, which means you have to be stronger and you have to be more deliberate in your setup. So to break the weight off the ground, one thing I emphasize is dragging that bar up through my shins. I always tell people that bar is a cheese grater, your shins are the cheese. You do not let that bar, in fact, I tell people, don't even try to pull the bar until you feel it touching your shins. If you go to pull the bar and it's not touching your shins, you're already dead in the water. Uh, so in the name of keeping the bar back, keeping it close to my shins, getting the best possible leverage, I have to start in that position. And for me, that means not just grabbing the bar where it's touching, that means physically rocking back. So my shins are vertical, my knees are back, I feel my hips tense up at that point, I'm braced, and then as I push, that bar stays close, and then I can just bring my hips into the bar. Now, this can be a little counterintuitive because if you let your weight drop back on your heels too much, if your shins get more vertical, your weight rocks back, it can feel like you're about to fall over. And that's kind of the, the sensation that you want to go for. So right now, I have the bar set up in the rack, okay, it's pinned, that's about deadlift height. It's pinned underneath the screws in the rack. So I'm gonna demonstrate my setup. You can see it from the back with exactly how I set up. So I'm walking up to the bar and all my feet are gonna go, okay? So right here is where I'm gonna get my hands on the bar and I'm gonna feel that bar touch my shins. And usually the bar rolls back a little bit. I'm gonna take a, I take a breath at the top if I'm not using straps because that allows me to get tight. So I'll take that Deep breath, hips are set, ribs are down, abs are tight. Deep breath into my tensed abs. I fill my chest up, I'm tense. That creates compression. I get this underhand in first. And then I actually have to pull myself into the overhand. Now from here, I'm not quite ready to pull. From here, I'm gonna let my weight drop back onto my heels. So if I let go, I end up falling back. So think about it as if there's almost a stop that you're pulling that bar back. That is gonna redistribute the weight on your heels. Again, you're gonna load in your hips and you are going to guarantee goddamn tee that that bar is back as close to your center of mass as it possibly can get. So once I'm in that position, a deadlift is not a pull. Do not think of it as a pull. You get that bar broken by pushing through the ground, okay? So once your hips get tight, I want you to think of it as a standing leg press. And this is why we do things like side handle deadlifts, trap bar deadlifts. If you've ever seen some of the big deadlifters, you probably see, uh, I forget the guy's name, Forsaken Warriors, that's what he goes by on IG. He's one of Josh Bryant's clients. He's a nasty deadlifter. He has a 900 plus deadlift. And uh, I wanna say Bryant has him do a lot of trap bar deadlifts. And the idea is to learn how to get your legs into uh, the deadlift. You break it by getting tense and pushing through the ground. So if you're in a good position, that bar is gonna scrape all the way up your shins. You're pushing, pushing, pushing. Once it's at your knees, the lift should be over. If you're missing the bar above your knees, it's because your positioning isn't good, so you're in a weak position over your knees, or it's because you just haven't figured out not to pull up, hips come into the bar. If you reinforce that over a training cycle, by the time that cycle's over, the lockout's gonna be the easiest part of the lift. Mechanically, you're the most advantaged, but it doesn't take a lot of time to develop the musculature so that that is the strongest part of the lift for you. You should be able to pull above the knee way more than you can pull off the floor. So one more time, going up to the bar, okay? Hips are neutral, glutes are tight, ribs are down. I got my cannonball breathing. Deep breath, as I hold it, get that compression. 
underhand, pull myself into my overhand. From here, I straighten out, I let my weight back, and then I push through the ground. So it takes a little while to dial in, but if nothing else, it gives you a concrete set of steps that you can follow to get the tightest possible, uh, the most compression anyways, and get the, the most powerful possible push off the ground. And you're gonna be more consistent. If any of you are having inconsistency issues like I had for so long with making sure that your deadlift working sets are good every single time, something like this, having a checklist to go through as you pull is gonna be a game changer. Now, I do the same setup with straps and I, I showed it in the video. I use the figure eight straps. The only difference is I have to set my hips and my position, get in, put my straps in and make sure I'm in that same exact position before I pull. My potential to get tight by taking my breath at the top is not quite as big, but it's, it's made up for by the fact that the straps mean I don't have to worry about my grip. I don't have to worry about an underhand. I mean, this is actually the, uh, the bicep that I tore a couple years ago. So I don't have to worry about how, how stable that's gonna be. I can get my straps in, lock my upper back in, get, get that cannibal bracing and just let it fly into the bar. So that's uh, basically my approach for setting up. But if you have any questions, anything to add to this, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Also go ahead and click that breathing and bracing link if you haven't already. It's a 50 page ebook, it's absolutely free. All you have to do is just flip through it even if you don't apply the exercises, conceptually understand what we're trying to do by keeping all of this locked in and tight. It takes a long time to get it good. I've been working on it for a couple years and it's just really started to pay dividends. But I got some big goals for my pull this year and that is 100% the reason why I'm able to pull what I am, injury free and uh, without complications, all right? So thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell. I'll see you.